International Geographic Research and Production presents The Amazing Secrets of Cambodian Cuisine. On the far southeast section of the Asian continent lies the small country of Cambodia. It has an amazing ancient history. Hinduism and Buddhism coexist here, closely interwoven with Khmer traditions, creating a unique cultural environment. In the past, Cambodia was a powerful state and waged many wars. The Khmers were fearless warriors and wise governors. The skillful craftsmen and talented artists of the kingdom were glorified throughout the whole of Southeast Asia. Today, only the magnificent pagodas, temples and monasteries remain as silent witnesses of the country's magnificent past. The recent period of the country's history is written in blood by the Pol Pot executioners. During the years of totalitarian rule, the Red Khmers had eliminated almost half of Cambodia's population. The capital of the country, Phnom Penh, suffered the most. The most educated and talented specialists in all fields of science, production and culture were murdered. Those dark decades have thrown Cambodia several centuries behind in its natural development. Today, it is one of the poorest nations on the planet. The main means of transportation of the native population is the motorcycle. There are no traffic lights in the city. That is why there are huge traffic jams on every intersection during the morning rush hour when most of the citizens are on their way to work. These jams block the normal flow of traffic for several hours at a stretch. Everyone is nervous and agitated, and only the traffic police can put things into a semblance of order. Tempers flare and fights seem just a split second away. However, something serious happens quite rarely. Cambodians, despite everything they have suffered, remain a very kind-hearted and peace-loving people. It is always hard to begin to describe a new, unknown country. There are too many impressions and too many interesting topics that are waiting to be explored. However, we do not have enough time to cover all of them. That is why we won't describe the historical and religious sites of Cambodia, and we won't go too far into the peculiarities of everyday life of the natives. We will describe the food the natives eat and what this food is made from. To get a deeper understanding of the Cambodian nation, we will explore the proverb, a man is what he eats. There are numerous small cafes in Phnom Penh where one can try dishes of the national cuisine. However, quite rarely would a European go there. The food is stored in unhealthy conditions, and the humidity and heat increase the risk of contracting stomach-related diseases. Despite these facts, the natives dine with pleasure in such cafes, or take the food out and eat it at home or at their workplace, or even while they walk. There are many restaurants in Phnom Penh designed for Europeans. These include exotic places where one can enjoy Thai food, the more common Korean and Chinese restaurants, and of course the inevitable Pizza Huts and McDonald's. Local people do not go into such places. First of all, it is very expensive, and secondly, they much prefer their own national cuisine.
The children's favorite food is baked bananas, and grown-ups consume different soups in large quantities. These soups are prepared from meat, fish, and chicken bouillon. Then different spices, dried roots, and vegetables are added. Soup is often consumed with vegetable salads and different rudiments made from dried shrimp, fish, and meat. Fish can be added to meat bouillon and vice versa. Soups are quite inexpensive, and that is why they constitute the basic food of the poorest class of the society. They are usually sold in plastic bags. There are a lot of different dishes prepared from rice and soybeans. These are stuffed cabbage rolls wrapped in bamboo leaves. These cakes are made from rice and soy flour with the sweet juice of different fruits added. Low alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks are in great demand among the natives. Sometimes they are made from snakes, but more often from different roots of plants and fruits. Cambodians like to drink a glass or two after work. In order to find out more about the peculiarities of Cambodian cuisine, we decided to visit the bazaar. There, we encountered the familiar bananas. However, in Cambodia, they are small and are consumed grilled or baked. Traditionally, Women carry food in big baskets on their heads or use the so-called yoke for this purpose. The vegetable sections of Cambodian bazaars are quite different from those of European markets. There is no dill or parsley, for example. Instead of regular potatoes, there is the patat, or sweet potatoes. These are the cleaned leaves of the lotus. They are used in salads and go into soups. Here you can see a lot of exotic grains, the young leaves of unknown plants, milk corn, and many other exotic things. This is the common pumpkin. However, Cambodians found an unusual use even for it. They eat its flowers. Many traders here have an aesthetic flair. For example, take a look at this woman who is selling pineapples. She has decorated them beautifully. There are a lot of mushrooms on the market. Some are reminiscent of our own field mushrooms, but all of them are of unique local varieties. The biggest section of the bazaar is the fish section. You can find virtually everything here. For example, the big tiger shrimps from the river. Even here, they cost a lot of money, something around $12 per kilo. Under the midday sun, in the conditions of heat together with the lack of refrigerators, the only way to keep the food fresh is to use lots and lots of ice, which the salespeople use to pack their products. Before crabs are sold, their claws are tied together with a rope 
so that they do not hurt the customers. Here you can get a fresh cuttlefish or a smaller shrimp. They cost much less. Along with soups, fish and different sea products constitute the basis of the Cambodian diet. These products are consumed boiled, fried, dried and smoked. In order to cook a cutlet or a fish ball, you have to use fish stuffing. You can get it here at the market as well. Sometimes at the bazaar, you may watch real professionals at their work. This woman is an ace at preparing fish. This type of craftsmanship at handling these instruments can be encountered quite often in Southeast Asia. This can be explained by the following. Many people in that region seriously study different Ushu styles, which besides fighting techniques, consist of many other components ones that help people to perfect not only their bodies, but also their souls. There are different types of fish of all sizes sold at the bazaar. For example, this is a big snakehead. It is the size of a matchbox and has red flippers. This one is even smaller. A sea devil, it's totally flat and has both its eyes on the same side of the body. We saw many mollusks at the bazaar, but we did not get to see the usual mussels and oysters. Mollusks are quite easy to prepare. They are simply baked on a griddle. The most magnificent creature that we encountered was the so-called sea praying mantis. It really does remind you of an ordinary praying mantis with the shape of its head and front legs. However, it is bigger and probably a lot tastier. It isn't cheap either. At 40,000 reals, around $12 for a kilo, it costs the same as the tiger shrimp. Along with fresh and raw fish, here you can get dried and smoked fish. Here you can purchase many spices, relishes and roots. This is smoked fish filling and it is used as a component for soup. Soy products are also very popular in Cambodia. This cotton-like substance is also smoked fish filling, only it is smaller in size. On the hawker's stand, you can see smoked shrimp, dried and fresh mushrooms, and many other items for which we could not find names or European equivalents.
These cutlets are cooked from soy flour with the addition of different vegetables and spices. This is an inexpensive dish and along with the previously mentioned soups is the most popular among the Khmer's. Very often on the town's streets, you can encounter braziers with boiling oil. Here you can fry any purchase you choose. Fried turtles, their eggs, and little birds from the woods are sold here as well. If you decided on buying a turtle, the merchant will open it up for you by cutting open the lower side of the shell. Sliced vegetables are the usual garnish for these. Cambodian cuisine continued to amaze us more and more. Red pig heads our consciousness had accepted, but smoked cuttlefish did not resemble anything edible at all. However, native culinary tradition had more surprises in store for us. Probably, our cuisine would seem incomprehensible for a regular Cambodian. The human being really is the most amazing creature on Earth, just by the way he adapts to the environment. After a pause for refreshments in the form of palm tree beer, we decided to continue our adventure. And right away we encountered a woman who was selling fried bugs. Called water tigers, they are sold here by weight, like sunflower seeds. This funny-looking box turned out to be a currency exchange box. Amazingly, we could not see a cashier nor a guard anywhere near it. Exotic and quite delicious is the juice of the sugar cane, which is made with the help of a special machine right before the customer. One of the main branches of Cambodian production is connected closely to ice. Refrigerators cost too much and not many people can afford them. So common people buy special thermoses where they put pieces of ice. They work quite well for storing perishables. We thought that we were prepared for any and all kinds of surprises, but our journey to the neighboring province of Kampong Chang 
provided some new and amazing insights into Cambodian cuisine. We found out that the main food of the natives of this province were fried spiders. This fact had a quite rational explanation. Before the natives discovered spiders, they only ate rice, and rice alone does not contain all the necessary microelements that the human body needs. That is how the Khmers, with the unwitting assistance of spiders, eliminate this problem. When our car stopped in the small town, it was immediately surrounded by women who carried big plates full of spiders and spider cocoons. Years ago, spiders were cooked on sticks like shish kebab, but nowadays they are fried in pans. Spiders were everywhere. We had a feeling that there was no other food in this province. This big spider is called a bird eater. On the island of Cuba, these spiders are called pirodom and are not used as food. We asked one of the natives to demonstrate how they eat spiders. It turned out to be quite simple. First, you tear off its legs, and then you eat everything else. It reminded us of the way we eat boiled crabs or crawfish. However, we found it hard to imagine a common European worker ordering a plate full of spiders as a snack to accompany his beer. Right there on the market square, we witnessed an original way to transport pigs. This little truck carried more than 20 pigs at a time. The pigs were sadly contemplating their future, while the atmosphere of the Cambodian small town way of life was felt everywhere. Geese at the gas station, the sing-song conversations of the natives, the amazing silences. We decided to buy several live spiders for the Moscow Zoo. However, this turned out to be a problem. Most of the spiders had already been deprived of their jaws. However, after some time, we found what we were looking for. One of our consultants finally gathered enough courage to try one of the fried spider's cocoons. We can testify that it did not do any damage to his health, and his reaction, you can judge for yourself. Tastes like caviar, though it is bigger. Here, at the local market, another surprise was in store for us. We were offered to taste a little fish called tetradonta. We did, and it was quite good at only about a penny a piece. Then, someone pointed out that the same little fish, only under another name, cost $50 each back in Moscow. In the evening, after we came back from our journey, we invited one of our Russian friends over and offered him some fried spiders. We have to confess that we did not taste them ourselves and admit that we feel no regret about it whatsoever. Tastes like crab or not quite crab, can't describe. However, it is tasty, lacks salt though. It's sort of like shrimp with chicken, something in the middle. Too many bristles, however, hard to get it clear. It's no big deal, really. Quite tasty, but I can't call it delicious. Tourists would be better off if they pass it up, though. 